The latest in our side-scrolling superhero series is dedicated to the one and only Spider-Man, which actually kicked off this whole kind of deep dive into all of these side-scrolling superheroes because I love the 2018 Spider-Man game that Insomniac developed so much. I wanted to explore and re-explore a lot of these superhero games that, uh, I, you know, time has kind of forgotten about. This is a 2002 Game Boy Advance game that Digital Eclipse worked on with Activision when they had the partnership around the Spider-Man movies. It's loosely based around the Spider-Man film, the first one starring Tobey Maguire, and uh, it doesn't really follow the core storyline of the film in any way. It's much more aligned with the comic stories and what we kind of recognize as the Spider-Man myth in general. You play as Peter Parker's Spider-Man and you swing around New York City taking care of all kinds of goons. You're, of course, swinging around city streets and taking care of bad guys there. You're rescuing hostages. You're defusing bombs. You're also infiltrating all kinds of office buildings. And I love the uh, this shattering glass effect that you have to do sometimes to bust into a building. I thought that was very cool. You're going to be uh, traipsing around inside of uh, train stations. You're going to be on top of boats. You're going to be in Chinatown. You're going to be on huge parade blimps. This game actually takes you to some pretty cool locations. And one of the things that they do to kind of spice things up to keep this not just a side-scrolling game is they uh, they put in a little bit of a 3d type mechanic it's kind of uh, a scaling 3d thing where you've got spider-man swinging into buildings and you've got an arrow and you've got to time your swings just right and swing around it's kind of like a bonus level but for the most part this is absolutely a side-scrolling experience and what I'm recognizing with the Game Boy Advance is that I might have hit the mother load with side-scrolling games this may have been the best platform for uh, side-scrolling superheroes in general because the hardware was actually pretty damn sophisticated and there was so much learning in the 16-bit generation on Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis that a lot of the developers that moved over to build side-scrolling games on GBA um, made some pretty damn cool stuff. I was very impressed with this game. There are definitely collision issues, but a lot of the problems that I had with Daredevil when I talked about that one, uh, where it felt like he was just too stiff and just didn't have the athleticism and the acrobatics, all of that is definitely remedied here. Spider-Man is uh, incredibly athletic. All of his punches and kicks and swings and zips, uh, they're all super fun to pull off. Although it does get a little touchy and sometimes the elaborate animations kind of get away from you as you're trying to navigate tight corners. I kept getting electrocuted in certain sequences because my character kept, you know, bouncing and, st and standing up where I didn't want him to. So sometimes being incredibly precise in the game becomes a bit tricky. But for the most part, this is a game that really rewards you. It's got lots of that comic book on them on a PS, so, you know, all of these words are flying all over the screen. It really does look, uh, you know, like a love letter to the comic books, which I really, really appreciate it. There's lots of little cool animated cut sequences as well, where we've got uh, Norman Osborn talking to his lackeys about the, the threat of Spider-Man. Spider-Man's also going to be fighting lots of bosses from the Spider-Man series, so you're going to face up against Kraven the Hunter. You're going to see Scorpion in this thing. You're you're going to see the Vulture, you're going to see Shocker in the subways. Shocker. Of course, you're going to fight against Green Goblin as well. The boss fights aren't particularly imaginative, and it felt like you just had to kind of figure out their pattern and you'd eventually take them down. And sometimes those patterns were a little opaque. It took a little while to kind of understand what you had to do. Uh, but once you got past it, it was fine. And there honestly were some uh, brick walls that I, I ran into figurative brick walls that I ran into playing the game where I had to kind of restart over and over and over again. But thankfully there is a save system on the cartridge and you pick up from where you last left off when you eventually get frustrated and you put it away and say, oh my, I can't take anymore. And then you come back to it. And honestly, my overall feeling with this game is that I really thoroughly enjoyed it. I think it's a great pickup. It's not necessarily a uh, you know a, an awesome souvenir tied to the Spider-Man movie, except that it stars the same character. But you know what? There are little digitized scenes from the movie that look incredibly blocky and uh, not great, especially blown up on a television, which is where I was playing this game. I played it on the uh, the GameCube that HDRGB sent out to me on the GBA player, and God, I love that thing. It's so fantastic. But yeah, the movie scenes did not look great. Uh, but you unlock them in a cool way. You actually have to take 
take photographs at specific moments within the levels and you have to time it just right so you get that picture and then you can look at all the photographs afterwards. There's lots of secret areas to unlock as well. This is a fantastic game. It really is. It's got some issues that you're going to have to contend with. I definitely wish that, again that this was a game that used all of the art assets and modernized it with some new 2020 type mechanics and I still firmly believe that modern side-scrolling superhero games would be very, very popular. Uh, but you know what? This was a great game to go back to. Very impressed. Digital Eclipse did an excellent job. I'm going to give Spider-Man for the Game Boy Advance. This was a 2002 cartridge, an 8 out of 10.